Hey, 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 what's going on? Komosta, mabuhay, magandang gabi, and welcome back to MGN Dieko. Ako po si Ovila, and in this video, we'll be reacting to Spanish speakers guess Filipino phrases with Spanish origins. This is going to be fun. It is a long video, it is 18 minutes. So if you have uh, like an hour, you know, in front of you where, and you don't know what to do, then welcome, sit down, uh, take a, a snack and let's enjoy this together. All right, before we start, please consider following me on Instagram at Music Game News and, be, and, 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 and without further ado, uh, let's get to it. La mierda. We all know what la mierda means, huh? Hello guys, my name is Maria. She is so pretty. Goodness gracious, from Spain. Yummy. I'm from Spain. I live in Madrid. Hey there, guys. My name is Gleb. I was born in Russia, raised in Spain, and I'm mm. here with my friend Daniel. Hey, guys. I was born in Colombia, but I grew up in Spain as well. Hello, my name is Fernanda, and I am from Mexico and living in Canada. In Toronto. Okay. Hello, my name is Alina Gonzalez. I'm half Spanish and half German, and this is my little sister. Hi, my name is Anoa Gonzalez, and I'm half Spanish, half German, too. All right. Hi everyone, my name is Macarena. I am Spanish. Are you kidding me? Her name is actually Macarena, like the song. From Spain, and that is where I currently live, in the city of Valencia. Hello guys, I'm Nash and I'm from Mexico. So let's start this and check how much I know about Filipino phrases. Buena mano. So buena mano means good hand in Spanish. I would buena say mano? you say that. To buena is uh, good. Mano, what is mano? A man? Someone to have good men. Luck? Buena mano. No. It has to mean something good, right? I think buena mano, you know, when someone cooks something nice, you know, hey, buena mano, you know, that I like it. <laughs> buena mano, good hand, maybe. Good hand, oh, good okay. Good at sewing, good at cooking. Buena mano, good hand. In Spanish, it means a good hand. Okay. Buena mano in Espanol, buena mano, good hand. For me, buena mano would be literally good hand. If I say someone has a good hand, I would be saying that they uh, are... Mano sounds like main, which is in French means also good hand. So main, mano. Okay, buena mano. Good at something. Good the hand. term used by store owners is really the first customer who enters the store. Home Lucky business, hands. He invites luck into the business through the day. Oh my God, I work in a restaurant, so I'm going to say to every client, buena mano, buena mano, buena mano. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Who then believe invites luck into their business throughout the day. Oh, I like that. That's nice. Mm, what? The first customer that comes into the store brings luck. At least it's nothing bad. So, let's okay. go. Invites luck into the business through the day. Oh, very interesting. Good to know. Kind of, I knew it. Describing the first customer who enters the store. Okay, learning, learning stuff. Pizza mm -hmm. de peligro. Pizza. Peligro. I hear that word a lot. Uh, peligro. Peligroso. Isn't that pretty? Mm. I don't know. Peligro means danger. I'm gonna say oh, that danger. Means be careful okay. in Philippines. Uh, or pizza, it is like pizza and peligro, like um, thinking of danger. <laughs> I don't know. Pizza de peligro. It means something dangerous. I think it could mean something like a little bit of danger. <laughs> Coquito con pequeño. Uh, yeah, like a little bit like a pizza de peligro. Pizza de peligro. I mean, the peligro danger. Pizza, it's almost like Italian. I don't know. Something obviously dangerous. Pizza de peligro. I have no clue what pizza means. We are half Spanish. Spanish. Understand? But de peligro means. The editing of this video is driving me nuts. In Sergafa. Oh my god. I have to translate this in three languages, okay? Please. Bear with me. Peligro means. Sh I know what it means. <laughs> I just don't know in English. Pizza, that is presa in Espanol. Presa del peligro, like you have been kind of catch by the danger. Something like that. Peligro means danger, and pizza, I have no idea. I'm gonna assume fuera de peligro, which means you're safe, you're out of danger. It refers to the last mm. stretch of days before payday. That makes sense. I'm in peligro, the, the last days. Yes. To be honest, this word is perfect. I'm gonna use it every day now. I lost all my money all the time. The last. Search of days before payday. Yes. 
it's such a dangerous time. Like, okay. Ah, you know, when that works, the last days are really tough. You have a hard time because okay. you don't have money, right? Okay, that's why peligro, okay. You describe the tough days interesting. when Taj is running low. Ah, interesting. The last stretch of days before payday. It's a puguera. That's come from Spanish. It's a de puguera. It's a de puguera. It's a de puguera. Puguera, puguera. <laughs> it sounds like flamenco. I'm really lost here. It's a puera. I have no idea to be honest. This thing don't really tell you anything. I'd say this is like food or, or this paella. Mm, or this. I doubt it. Maybe this rice, I don't think it's know. food. Yeah, it could be food, but if not, I'll say maybe something with fruits. I'll say Some, something with food. Let's see. For sure. It's a puera. Oh my god. I don't know. I'm sorry. It's a puera. Is this Spain Spanish? Because I do not know what this means. It's not Dutch. It's a puera. This one, no idea. I don't have idea. It's a puera. Está fuera. I would say fuera means outside. Whatever mm. that is, it is outside. I think she's the closest to the meaning of esta puera. Puera comes from Spanish. Está fuera. Really? Esta, to throw. Esta. Ah, esta. Esta pa fuera. It's up afuera. I can't believe that. It's up afuera. Of course, I say that all the time. Like, it's up afuera. I really want to learn this language now. It's up afuera. Oh. Okay, so the phrase it's up afuera came from Spanish. It's up afuera. It's up means to throw and fuera means out, away, or outside in Spanish. Okay, so to throw outside. Oh. See, I knew it had nothing to do with food. So it means to throw. We were not even close with that one. To throw. Oh, fuera. Oh, like, estás pa' fuera. Oh, I like that. Get out. Leave. Pa' fuera. Pa' fuera. Ah, now I saw the Spanish. Afuera. I assume mm -hmm. it's literally the same because echa afuera means like getting thrown out. Echa pa' fuera. Ah, pa' fuera, no, pa' fuera. Ah. Okay, interesting. Echar fuera. Okay, mm -hmm. so está fuera. It's echar fuera. To throw out, to throw away, or outside. Cuatro. Cuatro cantos. Well, cuatro is probably four. Cantos. <laughs> I'm gonna say cuatro cantos. I don't know if that's how you say it. Cuatro cantos for me is four rocks. For me, it's a place. Yeah, it has to be cuatro. Four. It has like four. Four borders. And maybe. four borders. Yeah, I'd say this is something about some type of square or yep. some type of. Cantos uh, in Spain means like like the border, like the. Uh, cantos, I would say maybe quantity. Quantity? Corner. I don't know how to explain it, but. It's like a famous place in Philippines, something like historical or cultural. Cuatro cantos. Cantos to sing, cuatro four, maybe like a group of people, something to do with being together. What? Ah! <laughs> I thought this is not the way how cuatro singers sing So four singers? What? Cuatro can Four singers! Ah, oh, maybe. Cuatro, yeah, Cantos. maybe. Cantos is like singing. Because singing is cantar. Cuatros means what? Cuatro cantos. For me, cuatro cantos means four edges. The table has huh? cuatro cantos. Cuatro, which means... Okay, the phrase cuatro cantos was read from the Spanish words cuatro, which means four, and cantos, which means edges slash sides. Okay, in the Philippines, it refers to a local alcoholic beverage that ended up with this nickname because of the shape of the bottle. Oh my god, okay. Means four, yes, and cantos, which is in edges inside. Well, cantos, okay, I said rocks, but yeah, like edges. I don't know English. In the Philippines, it refers to a local alcoholic. <laughs> I like that one. I want to drink that. Okay, it means four cantos. and cantos. Oh, cantos. No cantos. Uh. Oh, this is interesting. Cantos. Because in Mexico, I've never heard that being used cantos as like edges or sides. Cantos is like songs that people are singing. To the local alcoholic beverage. Oh, give me uh, two cantos. <laughs> she cannot speak English that well, but she's trying. This Definitely super different. You can see here el cuatro y el cuatro. Not very interesting. Cantos means each side. Oh, very good. Cantos in Spanish means, yeah, at least here in Mexico, a place. It's a canto, you know, like a place where you put kind of water. I got the literal meaning, but I obviously didn't know that it was an alcohol. I feel like she is uh, a little under the weather, you know, like her nose is a little stuffed. I'm learning a lot today. Pan de regla. Pan de regla? Pan. A pan? That you cook on, regla, is something that you measure with? I don't know. Okay. Mm, what the pan means bread. The regla bread. could mean okay. a ruler, but ruler, it could yeah. be... <sighs> I hope it is not like period bread. 
Ah, yeah. really, oh, really, yeah, yeah. Although it would be people that way. I'm gonna guess that it would be like a sandwich of <laughs> something that is red, like chorizo. I don't know. I'm gonna say that it's a good food, guessing. Pan de regla. Obviously, it has to be something with bread. And uh, maybe means bread from yesterday? It uh, really means in Spanish, like bread from the period. period. Oh, period. Yeah, it's like some sort of dessert that has like some red thing, oh, you know? It could be, like, it could be, like some bread that maybe, some, like maybe. strawberry sauce or. <laughs> <laughs> Pe period bread <laughs> bread that women eat when they have their period holy moly a ruler maybe it has like, some like religious you know a type of bread that you eat during certain times of the year because it's special like pan de muerto pan de regla <laughs> Bread from the period? Pan de regla. Pan, bread, regla. It's a type of bread. Pan is bread and regla can mean woman's period or a ruler. So I'm going to say uh, a bread that either is like a period bread that is bread <laughs> or a bread that is really flat, like a ruler. Pan de regla is a soft local okay. bread. Okay. Menstrual bread in Spanish, pan de regla, is a soft Filipino bread with a distinct red filling okay they were very close to it it's such a bread fix you can get it at almost every local bake shop as to how it ended up with such a uh, sensitive name pepper.ph mentions that it is because it looks like the cross section of a used sanitary napkin holy moly okay Vamos. with a distinct red filling <laughs> it. it was food. I will probably try that. Toma! Yo! Wow. <laughs> we were right on that one. Pan de is actually spelled for menstrual bread. That did not cross my mind, but it is true. And it's a soft local bread with a distinct red filling. Got it. Interesting. It's called like that because it looks like this bread has its period. Oh! Soft local bread. I want to try it. No! <gasps> menstrual bread? What the hell? I have no <laughs> idea how we ended up with a such sensitive name. That, ah! That's why the regla. Oh my god, I don't want to eat it anymore. I can't believe this. It's actually period bread. Yep. What's inside, or is it just food coloring? Because it looks like the cross. Dude, that's a bad name for uh for food. It doesn't make you want to eat it. Section of a used. It sanitary. doesn't sound appetizing. You definitely want to eat that. No. <laughs> La mierda. <laughs> La mierda means the sh. Like Doo doo. Ooh, I really yeah. don't know what to say here. La mierda, la mierda, la mierda. <laughs> I say that all the time at work. La mierda, la mierda. I, I hope it's not shit, like real poop, no? I'm gonna say something similar. I'm gonna say that that means the toilet. La mierda, mi hermano, la mierda. La mierda. <laughs> it could be a false friend, right? I, mean, I, I, I know what that means. I got the intuition. That's something when you get angry, you fucked up something, you say la mierda, mi hermano, la mierda. Or I don't know what to say in Filipino, but Yo, like that. I think it's something like that. When you angry, I think it's the same mierda. thing. It's like a swearing. La mierda. The sh but it's together, I love that, la mierda. <laughs> yeah, mierda, it's a curse word. La mierda. Ah! <laughs> it's like the shit in Spanish. La mierda. No! Is that? <gasps> sí, la mierda. No. Oh my god, that's like your shit. La mierda. It means the shit to me, so it's shit. It's la mierda. In the Philippines, it means simply to do in Spanish, la mierda may sound like la mierda. Mierda is a curse word. In the Philippines, it means to loiter or walk around while doing nothing? What? Or simply to do nothing. That is crazy. It may also refer to a student who skips class to go somewhere else than school or to a worker who sacks off to avoid the workload. What? Nothing. Are you saying that la mierda means to do nothing? I am yeah. la mierda. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, I am la mierda. I guess that. She does nothing. To walk around. Oh, well, you know, you f it up easily sometimes. <laughs> so it may also refer to a student who skips class. Yeah, in Mexico, it's very common to say pintar, like someone skipped class is like te pintaste. Very different. And the film scenes it means. <laughs> You know who skips class to go somewhere? That's me, not me. <laughs> Don't say that in Spain. Okay. To do nothing. <sighs> oh my god, I'm la mierda sometimes in the morning. That sounds super different. Oh my god. If my mom listened to me saying that, she would kill me. Oh, okay. To do nothing. I can see why. And here we sometimes say, no he hecho una mierda. So I haven't done shit. I don't want ah. to say conio. So conio. 
Okay, this one, I know there is a, a song named Konyo, so I don't know if it means uh, ass or stupid or a, a uh, is it an animal? Uh. Konyo means in Spanish with an ñ <clears throat> vagina. <gasps> Seriously, I didn't know that. In a really bad way. Or something that you say like, oh, God. I'm gonna say that this word is like the same one in Spanish and it means lady parts. Huh. You'll have, have to be gentle with this one because it's gonna be talking about. I don't know. Uh, when I, you know, asked someone to explain to me what that meant because I was listening to a song called that, they said it was ass, I think. Hey, yeah. hey, yo, bro, I ain't got no business there. No, so, no, no, no. Girls. Private part, whatever. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't think it would mean the same in the Philippines. Konyo would be more yeah, like. I don't want to risk it, you know. No, nah, I'll say when you get angry, you say Konyo in the Philippines. Konyo. I mean, we know in Spanish, Konyo. Also, a curse word. So, probably the same thing. Konyo. <gasps> yeah, that's a strong word in Spanish. Konyo, I think in Spanish is like. Yeah, the female. female Konyo is like the root word for vagina, or it hmm. can mean a curse word like. Like shit, I forgot something. So you say that derived from the Spanish word coño, which refers to the female genitalia. Okay, okay. See, I had no idea. I'm learning. I'm learning with you guys. Coño is a common Spanish idiom, often tagged as vulgar. In Filipino, the word coño is a semi-degrading term referring to a language or popular of middle to upper class who speak Taglish. <gasps> English and Filipino. Yeah, that I knew in a fussy slash pretentious way. Seriously, you guys call these people conyo? Wow, okay, you call them vaginas. They're vaginas. <laughs> to the people all the language, you say conyo. <laughs> Well, <laughs> maybe you use it to the same way we use it. To be honest, I'm really shocked of everything right now, of all the words. I'm really bad though, but I'm learning. First the language of people or middle upper class who speak Taglish. Oh, wow. So wow, amazing. I wouldn't know. Aha, uh -huh. it's like a classist thing. Interesting, because in Spanish, or in, at least in Mexico, we say this maybe like fresa, which literally translates strawberry, but I think that's someone that might carry themselves very pretentiously and the way that they express themselves or something so there's some links there but very different word and the middle or upper class who speaks english and filipino they call them konyo do you know this no i really doubt now okay anyways ah, very interesting the difference there combination of the english and filipino language in a fussy pretentious way Ooh, okay so they're speaking konyo like they're speaking taglish mm -hmm. se joda. <laughs> se joda. no like idea like a really bad word. Oh! So I'm Eesh. gonna say that it's not going to be like nothing that I guessed before. They are teaching me a lot of bad words. Spanish bad words. Or, um, because clearly in uh, Filipino it does not, you know, mean the same thing. I'm gonna say that it's something bad that you would say to someone that is really annoying. Like, que se joda. Que se joda. Que se joda. Obviously, we know what it means in Spanish. Leave me alone, <laughs> baby. Let's Let's cheese. Right. Queso. Cheese. Cheese. Queso. Oda. Maybe like a treat as well, like something like like a play, like dessert. Something with cheese. Yeah. Que se joda. <laughs> in Spanish, it's kind of like, f you. Completely different spelling. So I'm assuming it's similar. You never know. It doesn't sound rude though, que se joda, you know? It doesn't sound rude. Saying it to someone that, you know, is annoying you. Que se joda. I don't know. Doesn't sound. Que se joda. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We know this one. Oh, yes, yeah, something bad. <laughs> que se joda. That's as well very kind of a Spanish expression. It's not too much Mexican. But... It's very interesting how the Mexican girl did not pronounce. She 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 pronounced the H as H. You know, she said que se joda, not que se joda. Que se joda. But just it's very very different spelling. It's really interesting. Que se joda for me is literally. <laughs> this person <laughs> screw this person <laughs> let it be que se joda. in the philippines is a thought translation the word is derived from the spanish phrase que se joda which means uh, we, uh, which meaning varies from the hell with them or you to damn you to f you know but in the philippines it's rough translation simply means even though even if or no matter wow simply means even though I love this language I'm gonna use these words every day in my life <laughs> <laughs> Yes, I like it. The Philippines yeah, no. simply means even though. Oh, so, uh, so I guess it's kind of similar. I guess it can be a little bit like no matter what or like 
outfit, I'm gonna do it. Also useful. In the Philippines, it means even though. Okay, so hold up. Okay, come on. Uh, really? That's really crazy the differences. I will never guess any of these ones. I just will clueless about this. Even though, even if or no matter, I like it and I can see. It. So basically, it's a little bit dangerous for Filipinos to go to Spain and use these words, you know, because in Spanish, these words are bad words. Why it is used this way? Puto seco? For me, that would. Puto seco? Puto means. uh right like b i t c h be fucking dry puto is a really bad word and yeah. seco it means dry i'm gonna say dry it means okay oh puto seco this is like the thing that you would say to your friend so your friend's not talking your friend's being like dry you say oh puto, puto seco, seco like yo bro what's up with you <laughs> maybe they use it like we want to say something is dry they say oh yeah. it's puto seco <laughs> maybe when you're eating the ride you know and it's not very tasty you say mm, puto seco you know something like that puto seco <laughs> sorry puto is also a curse word but seco it's like dry so it could also be a type of food after panderela honestly anything is <laughs> I think she would have guessed that puto seco just means like something is dry Did you know that puto seco means like male prostitution in Spanish? Puto seco, oh my god, I know <laughs> Maybe it's dry hoo-ha <laughs> <laughs> what do they say that it's not about the words? Puto seco. No, I don't have idea what can. A dry vagina. <laughs> Puto seco. Freaking dry person. Not nice to talk to. This person doesn't speak. This person doesn't make an effort. It's un puto seco. So it's a sweet. Okay, I gotta check. Puto refers to a male prostitute. Well, yeah, that we know in Spanish. And seco is an adjective that means dry in Spanish. Puto seco in Filipino is neither offensive nor vulgar even with its spanish origins it is a sweet delicacy <laughs> made up of sugar cornstarch flour egg and butter are you serious dude that is so weird that is so so weird i said that it was a hair dryer okay i will try that after the bread after the pan the regla it's nothing but a sweet delicacy made with sugar <laughs> there you go it's a sweet delicacy made yeah she was sugar, right yeah. flour again butter and it looks delish give me some puto seco <laughs> it's not offensive or vulgar so give me some taste. puto seco puto seco algunas personas lo quieren comer <laughs> Ah, so delicacy. Very interesting, and I want to try it. Sounds kind of a cookie. These are cookies. I want to try the puto secos and not the person. <laughs> ah, this one I know. Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Jesus, Mary, uh, Jesus, Mary, Joseph. You guys say it really fast, and you know, it's like a mush. Uh, Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Je Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Yeah, that's it. Maria and Jose, Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. I'm yeah. gonna say that it's Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. A family in one word. Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Sounds like Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. Mm -hmm. This might be something religious. Like when you maybe you say something you say to someone like you want to wish them the same life. Like blessing, wish them life. Yes, yeah, Mary, Joseph. Mary, Joseph. Mary, Joseph. This is such a new word. Just the way that it looks. Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Jesus, Mary, Joseph. Something Mary and Jose. Jesus, Mary, Joseph. I think it is derived from Jesus, Maria y Jose, which is an idiom. I love her accent, this girl. We use to say like, oh my God, mm -hmm. Maria y Jose, I yeah. forgot to do this, literally. Yeah. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. That's it. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph from the... Uh, Sus Maria Josep is a popular term used by many Filipinos, especially when angry, frustrated, or in disbelief. While it has no Spanish equivalent, it does have strong Spanish origins. Sus Maria Josep is a contraction of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph from the Spanish names also used in the Philippines. Jesus, Mary, and Joseph. My brother's name is Joseph. His name? But it means you say that when you're angry. Sus Maria Josef. I like that. Pan de regla, sus Maria Josef. Y puto seco. I'm going to use every day of my life. When angry, frustrated, or disbelief. Bro, and it has no puto seco. So we made it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
Jesus Maria José. But in the Philippines, you say it like together. Yeah, in Spanish, I don't really use it, but I've heard people say like, Jesus Maria José. Interesting. Jesus Mari José. Oh. I did not guess that. Jesus and Mari, yes, I knew it. I won this one. Um, there are Spanish names which are also used in the Philippines. Jesus Maria José. And I think that it is used more or less like I have used it. it tells us about links between the Spanish colon. As a Spanish speaker, what are your thoughts after discovering the meanings of these words or phrases with Spanish origin used in the Philippines? And the Philippines. Obviously, same way in Mexico, colonized by the Spanish. So it's a language that we use every day. So I think this is a great exercise to do and to think a little bit more carefully and intentionally about the meanings of these words and what those words mean. I really, really didn't have any clue about what any of these phrases could even mean. I knew like two years ago, like Mexico and Filipinas had a good connection, like, but we were conquered by the same. So don't kill me for that. But I knew the last one and I'm proud of that. I really like it that we've got so much in common and I have seen this with my friend Ira. Hello Ira. She would, for instance, say words that are very similar in Spanish and she was speaking Tagalog and that I think brings us closer. I really like it. I have definitely learned a lot. It's been productive. <laughs> Thank you very much and goodbye. Hey, there you have it guys. This video was lovely. I learned a bunch of terms. Uh, granted, they are not the best, you know, words to learn because most of them were bad words, right? After this video, I'm definitely gonna eat some puto seco. <laughs> This is awesome, man. I cannot believe it. <gasps> Coño. Now I know what Coño means in Spanish and in, uh, in Filipino. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay, so Spanish people, if they go to the Philippines and use these words, you know, it'll be okay because most of these, you know, bad words are not bad in the Philippines. But the opposite isn't true, right? So... Filipinos, be careful when you use these words in Spanish-speaking uh, countries like Spain and Mexico. Or probably Puerto Rico as well, Colombia, you know what I'm saying? So just be careful. This was awesome! If you guys have another video like this that you'd like me to react to, do not hesitate to let me know. Maraming maraming salamat po. Did you... Um... Okay, so... Obviously, most of you guys that watch my videos are Filipinos, right? So you knew the meaning of these words in Filipino, but did you know the meaning of these words in Spanish? Tell me in the comment section below. Um, take care of yourselves, have a great day, stay safe, and of course, I will see you in the next one. Peace. Thank you for watching. Subscribe here and please like the video to show your support and appreciation for my work and turn on the notification bell to be poked for future content. Yeah, yeah, yeah.